Um, we're now coming to the bit, and the idea of this format we've got this evening is that before we do the formal voting of things, we've all had an opportunity to understand what's in front of us. And the biggest thing, of course, is the accounts. And the first set of accounts we're going to look at is the trust, and Simon is going to take us through those. Thanks, welcome. Uh, and you follow Graham Wesley. <laughs> certainly, certainly not that charismatic. <laughs> um, okay, this is a very unsexy bit of the night, so I'll try and fly through it a bit. Um, from the supporters' trust perspective, um, we had income of over a quarter of a million last year, and the majority of that was was um, your community shared donations. Um, that accounted for over two hundred thousand of the quarter of a million. We also got in uh, subscriptions of 22,000, rewards and benefits donations of 20,000, and 1K through other fundraising, which is mainly the supporters to trust shop online. We spent 9,000 more. We bought 236,000 pounds worth of shares in the football club, as we publicised strongly at the time. Um, the costs of the due diligence exercise, where we were deciding whether it was feasible to take the football club over or not, cost us 22,000. We have fundraising costs of 3,000, and this is a, a small point I want to develop. Those costs are the costs that PayPal and Go Cardless, etc., take from us for processing your payment. Now, PayPal take four to five percent of everything you pay us, whereas Go Cardless only take one. And that's the main reason why we're trying to encourage people over to Go Cardless because it actually makes us more money. Um, it costs us about two two K to run the supporters trust, that's things like accountants fees, registration fees with the FCA and other legal bodies. And we also make donations to community um, initiatives, and last year we gave a thousand pounds to kit out the academy coaches. Okay, so our plans for this year um, we want to be more visible. Um, I've begun to do support and stress surgeries in the Snelling two hours before Saturday games. Come and talk to me, be a membership query, just want to chew the fat, not be around. Come and talk to me. Um, there's going to be more open meetings. Um, we want to mem I'm going to be behind a membership push. Currently got just over 1,200 members. I'd like to get that past 1,500. So you'll see a bit more of me from that angle as well this year. Um, a few technical administrative changes. Um, change where we're registered so that we're registered here where the staff are and to align our reporting period which is which closes in August to align it with the football club which um, ends in June and there's going to be um, a development of the benefits and rewards scheme to significantly increase every oh, sorry, no, It's not really a question, it's just a quick thought. Looking at our average attendance it is clear that at most of our matches on average some of them will be children, of course, but on uh, most of our matches, a thousand of our fans are not just members. Yeah, do you know, that, that rankles with me. We had Portsmouth here on Boxing Day, and I spoke to their trust chairman. They have an under 20% take-up. of their, They have 20% of their average attendance uh, trust members. So we, we, when you compare the membership number to the average attendance, probably... 50% is pretty good. I mean, Bosworth would kill for that. But I'm still aware that there's 50% that are not trust members. I'm aware tonight where people have been coming in that they weren't aware that their membership had lapsed. I'm going to take an action to go to talk to my website administrator and strategize how we can make that better. It cost you money, has not it? You've lost money. I accept. You're right, I'm, not, I'm an accountant and that wrangles with me. I don't understand it all. I don't understand it all. 
Yeah, but, but it's for the individual to set up standing orders. That's not for me to do. You have to, stand, you have to set up a standing order to the supporters' trust. Indeed. I, I, I did have one in the silence, so it did come out perfectly. So I did have a look at the Yes. As I say, if, if there's flaws in the system, I'll take an action to go away and we make it better. If you, sometimes you have to see that it's wrong to get it right. Right, is it uh, another chance to buy shares? Well, community shares? Yes, community shares are closed, right? They, they officially closed when we, dis when we took the decision to purchase the majority share in the football club. That, that is closed for the moment. Okay. Just to add on that though, and I think we've covered it in the FAQs as well though, it is something that we, we are looking at as various different revenue streams that we could potentially uh, come in. So we will communicate later on that, but I think we've got it in the FAQs as well. Any other questions for Simon at all? Mark? Oh, sorry. Uh, one of the main problems I think people have is being able to have a facility to give to the club. Because when we have the email to say the trust member should run out, the only option we've got is to try and find a trust member on match day. Yeah, I've tried to tackle that, Mark. I've set up a trust area in the club shop where you can get forms and there's a post box there. So we, we operate five different payment methods. PayPal, go cardless, standing order cash check. If you pay cash or check, you can <coughs> use that facility. You can just drop that in the, in the post box and I'll pick that up at the, at the next time I'm at the club. <coughs> As I say, the system works for about 90% of the people that have got, I've started tackling the offline, what I call the offline, which is the cash check people now I need to go to the online and I start needing to look at those renewal notifications <coughs> and the website. But my first strategy was to go to the offline because I felt that the offline needed a bit more tuning than the online. Okay, thanks Simon. Any, one final question for Simon, anybody? Are we happy to move on? Rob? Oh, sorry, Roy. Uh, Twenty-two thousand pound on due diligence. Was that value for money, or in the sense that he gave us a clearer idea of whether taking over the football club was feasible? Because I think really the decision was: could the supporters trust, or would they have the resources to stabilise the football club? So, to me, twenty-two thousand does sound like a lot of money. But then, it's the biggest decision a supporters trust will ever have, taking over their own football club. And I think from the perspective that, that it gave us an insight into what we would be taking on, I think it was a worthwhile exercise. Yeah, the due diligence didn't inform us of everything we needed to know. But it gave us enough to make it a stop go decision. I think, Rob, it depends on how you define value for money as well. I think that uh, I understand the point you're making. I think we at the time, guided by Supporters Direct, used our best endeavours and used the experts that were part of that um, as well. Is 10 grand worthwhile from what we got off the legal advisors that they provide us? It's an opinionated type thing. There were quite a few things, as we all know, that came out thereafter. I think one of the difficult factors that we had, and when you do something like this, probably the five weeks we had it to do it with, or whatever the time frame made it really, really difficult for that. So, well, they're, they're lawyers, yeah, yeah, they're lawyers, yeah. yeah. They're lawyers that were uh, working for Supports Direct. They, they, they were. Uh, recommended by them to us, they've done many other different clubs in terms of that. I think the big challenge we had was timing more than anything. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks very much. If we move on then to um, the next slide.
Having done that, we're now going to have a look at the county's figures for last year, and we're going to ask our consultant, Nick Igo, to do this. The reason is that the other two people who are participating in the financial management, <coughs> Nigel Fre Stevenson, the finance manager, and myself, only took over in part year, whereas Nick has a, has a full year understanding, so he can probably give you a fuller explanation. Thanks, Malcolm. Uh, yeah, I've been involved, as I mentioned, since uh, the uh, early stages of the due diligence. I would add I didn't get up to that 22,000, if uh, that's going to be the first question. Um, I'm not only going to sort of do an overview of all of this. Um, if you all received the notice, you should have um, been advised that the accounts are up on the club website. So anyone who's interested in looking at the accounts can download them and I think they're fairly informative for um, a club of our size. We go further than we need to in terms of disclosure and I hope people find it helpful. So I was just going to really touch on um, three areas, just a, an overview of the trading performance, a reconciliation between that trading performance and the closing cash position uh, and the third point is just um, taking advantage of a uh, a facility that the Football League give all clubs. Um, when they started introducing um, progressively more um, strict um, financial fair play regulations, um, the rules that applied at League Two level um, was a limit on um, player costs relative to income. And we all have to make returns twice yearly to the League. In return, they give us a report twice yearly that benchmarks us against all other clubs. They, they don't name the clubs. Um, you get 24 sets of numbers and they say your club four, your club 12. So you can see where you sit alongside other clubs. And it is, it's quite helpful. Um, so th those are the points I was going to touch on. Trading performance is just a summary of the um, figures in the accounts. The, the key feature, I think, to note is that our operating loss uh, 360,000 was significant, but 400,000 down on the previous year. The main reason for that is uh, a cut in player wage costs year on year. Um, there's a very, very slight increase in turnover. That was mainly because of the FA Cup run, which offset a slight reduction in income from the, the more regular streams, gate money, commercial money, that sort of thing. Um, and obviously then we had the benefit of a very substantial amount of uh, transfer fee income, 700,000, which you all know was um, a combination of Washington, Regan Poole and Aaron Collins. Um, so what I wanted to do was just um, summarize the, the main sources of funds into the club and out. Um, the actual result is the first column, and I've set against it, some figures that people may have seen when we did a, an update to all trust members back in July, which were estimated figures. So, so there are slight movements, but that was our best stat back in July. Um, the figure for um, transfer fee income was very slightly different just because of timing of receipt of transfer fees. The trust fundraising is the um, figure that Simon would have mentioned to you. So overall, the club got 930,000, if you like, of non-trading income in. And that helped to fund settling a lot of um, exceptional debt from the previous year. Um, those of you who attended the AGM at the Riverfront back in the summer, we did touch on it. Um, there was a bank overdraft, there was arrears of tax, um, there were loans to uh, are from directors and from other people. Um, there were arrears just to major suppliers uh, and creditors like Rodney Parade and our kit suppliers. And we drawn down a lot of the following season's commercial income. So that 293 is trying to clear out a lot of that. Uh, and that's obviously not something you have to do every year. It was a once and for all thing. Um, we also had to um, fund the, the trading loss. Um, it was 360 in the previous slide, a very slight difference because of non-cash items. And the 58,000 is um, loans principally uh, repaying the scanning. So we ended up with a closing bank balance of 274,000, which you've seen in the accounts. Um, then th this is the third slide, and this is um, the, the 
thing I was talking about where the Football League provides us twice yearly with um, statistical information about club income and player costs. The figures will be very slightly different from our accounts because of the way the league presents them, but in material terms, it's the same. And you can see that there's a massive range just concentrating on this year, uh, and to some extent these are estimated figures, obviously, but the lowest club is forecasting 1.7 of income, the largest club 6 million of income, and the top clubs are likely to be maybe Portsmouth, Plymouth, Luton, those clubs. The average is 3.1 million, and Newport County is 1.8, and that ranks us 22nd in the, the league table of turnover. Similar pattern in player costs. Um, the club spending the most money, 2.7 million. The least is 0.8 million. Average is 1.4, and, and we're below average at just under a million. Um, it's actually escalated very slightly since then, but that was um, set around October, I think. Uh, and in both <coughs> cases, we rank 22nd. And you know there is a strong correlation between wages and turnover, inevitably, that clubs can only spend what they earn, and if they try and breach uh, the limit set by the league, then the league starts imposing transfer embargoes and things like that. So you are going to see um, that there is a strong correlation. The secret for the smaller clubs such as ourselves is to make damn sure that we spend our limited resources <coughs> wisely and that every penny's got to count, and, and that's something a club is obviously trying to do, as well as um, growing income from all sources as much as we can. Um, and that's the challenge ahead of us. That's all I wanted to say. If there's any questions, happy to field them. I would say that we're trying to focus on last year's accounts for now, which we do ask you to approve in the main body of the meeting. If you've got questions about where we're heading in the future, we'll pick those up in the Q&A afterwards. Hi, Nick. Uh, just one question. How much do we, do we actually receive from the league? Um, it's 470,000, or 474, I think, from the Football League, and then I think it's about 460 from the Premier League. Yeah, it's about 900 in, yeah. in all. Yeah. And that, that's fixed regardless of league position of that. Uh, hi there. Um, is there any more um, ongoing um, transfer fees uh, with the players that have gone, like the Rican Pool? Um, uh, I know the Evans went to Wolves, and I don't know the. Uh, well, Con is, is Connor Washington, is, we had all the fees involved with him now. No, the, there's some further amounts would be due on appearances. Yeah. Uh, and he's still got games to play, although I think he's injured just at the minute. Um, Colin uh, Evans has gone, uh, nothing more there, nothing right. more from Collins, I think, unless he's ever sold on. Uh, and Poole, I think there would be something if he made a debut. And, and Connor Washington is, we've received all the ongoing... No, no, the sum appearance. Oh, there's some, okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry, do you have your hand? Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else got any questions? Okay. Anybody? No? Okay. Thanks very much, Nick. Thank you.